Well, welcome to a freezing cold ship's tips episode six. Now I've brought you to a fishery that I haven't actually been here for probably 10 years. It's called Burley Fields. It's in between Gloucester and Cheltenham. Um, there's lots and lots of skimmers. There was lots of roach in here when I used to come, but the skimmers have obviously bred and there's lots of skimmers. I thought what a great opportunity to bring you back to a great fishery and try and catch these skimmers. Now, like a lot of commercials, a lot of anglers come here and fish with pellets. There's lots of carp anglers, some real big carp in here as well. So you can just imagine there's all sorts of baits going in. Now I'm going to catch or try and catch these skimmers on pellets and ground bait. And I've done my ground bait. I've mixed that up, ready to go now. I've got my two mils. I've got my pro expanders ready to go. I'm going to turn around and then start the session and see how we get on. I've just put my kit down. Like I say in all my little videos, if you're going to use ground bait, either do it in the morning before you leave home or do it on the bank when you get to your peg. So I've put my gear down and I'll do my ground bait. Now, this ship's tips is all about fishing with ground bait, but looking to fish expanders on the hook trying to catch skimmers. I mean, it's absolutely deadly. If you come to a place like I am today, there's lots and lots of skimmers from probably four or five ounces up to two pounds. So my ground bait today, it's one of my favorite winter ground baits. I've even used this in the summer. It's called Pro Thatchers. Why I like it, it's a finer ground, ground bait. It goes through a finer process at the factory. So if you want some up where you're gonna be putting ground bait in, you don't want loads and loads of feed in it, Thatchers is the one. So I'm gonna mix that in. Obviously you can vary this to how much ground bait you're gonna want. It's really cold today. You can see from the grass, it's absolutely, it was minus four last night. So I'm not going to use tons and tons of ground, but I know I'm not going to put loads in. So, and nice thing about the Pro range, it's only a kilo ground bait. I'm going to put about, probably just over half a bag of Thatchers in. But one ground bait I love as well, it's called Pro Green. This has already been open, because I actually used it on the weekend. If you want to make your mix, I mean, I looked at the water this morning and it's quite clear. Now, if you're a little bit concerned, you know, if you use like a light mix like Thatchers, I mean, that's quite a light ground bait. If you come to a venue like I am, and you're a little bit concerned that if you want to tone your ground bait down a bit, and also it's a pro green is a quite a heavy smelling fish meal. If you smell it, it's real potent, and I like that. I've been using it quite a lot. Now I'm going to put, you can probably tell, I probably put about a quarter of a bag in over the weekend. I'm going to put the same in to me Thatchers. So put that in, not loads. It just tones it down a bit, and it also gives it quite a lot of smell. So I've got both of my ground baits I want in my bucket. Make sure you use a nice round bucket because it's really important when you're mixing your ground bait. First of all, mix that around dry. And then, like I always do, with all your ground baits, try and come up with some sort of a, a unit container that you put your water in. It makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker. And I know in a bag of Thatchers or most of the pro green ground baits, I put about three quarters of a pint of water in at the start. So that container is a pint. I'm going to put like sort of three quarters of a pint in and I'm going to stick that straight in the mix. Don't worry about it. Just get it in. I mean, that water is absolutely freezing. And make sure you get all the dry ground bait in the corners or up around the edge of the bucket. That's what's so good about using a round container. If you use a square container, you get them in the corners, you don't always get your dry ingredients in. So do that. And it's as simple as that. I would leave that now. I mean, it's quite wet there, quite soggy. It doesn't matter, the water will go into that. Probably about 20 minutes, something like that. Push it through a maggot riddle like that. It'd be absolutely perfect. Now, one other thing I'm gonna be using today is micro pellets. Even though it's freezing cold, I wanna put a few micros it would be ground, but I know it's going to be really important. So I've got some Fin Perfect um, two mils there. Really, really easy. I'm not going to use that many. I'm just going to use my little pint container. And I'm going to put about a pint in. 
I know I'm not going to use loads. I'll keep them for next time. And I'm literally going to... I want these soaked quite a lot. I mean, the water's freezing cold. We've even got a little bit of ice on the lake that I'm fishing. That's how cold it was last night. I'm not method feeder fishing today. If I was method feeder fishing, I would literally put the water on these pellets for probably 20 seconds and take the water off. I'm not fishing the method today. I want these soaked right up for these skimmers. So I'm going to put literally the same amount of water to two mils and I'm just going to leave them, let them soak all that water and they'll come up nice and fluffy and that's it. That's the bait for the day. Apart from riddling my ground bait off, I'm going to get back to my gear now, set a few bits up and I'll come back and show you exactly what the finished ground bait and what the pellets look like. Right, I'm all ready to go now. We're going to start a session. Just a quick talk about where I'm going to fish, first of all. 13 metres, that's going to be my main line. That's where I'm going to put three balls of the mix that I'll show you in a second. But off to an angle at 14 and a half metres, I'm going to put one ball in. Now, the reason behind that is, if I go to a venue such as Burley Fields today, and the fishing, I know the fishing's gonna be difficult. I mean, we've had two really cold easterly wind days the last two days, and this morning it was like minus four. It even had cat ice, it's got cat ice on it. So it's gonna be difficult, but I wanna put a volume of baiting on one line, but I want that negative line where I can put one ball in and that's where I can start fishing. You know, that positive line might not work for, it might not, it might take an hour, Sometimes it takes two or three hours. I don't know what's going to happen today. That's why we go fishing, because it obviously makes it interesting. So anyway, I'm going to do my mix now of what I'm going to put in. Like I do on all my filming, try and use a measurement. Because if I come back to this venue in two weeks' time on similar conditions, in my mind, I might think, well, I'll just cut out the micros a bit, or I might cut out the ground bait a bit. So just do that, and it makes it a lot simpler. So I've got my ground bait there, my riddle ground bait that we'd done earlier. And I'm going to put, basically that's a ball of ground bait. So I'm going to put four of them in a in an EVA tub. So that takes most of that EVA tub up, to be honest. So I've got four, four um, pots of ground bait in there. And then obviously you can vary this to different venues you go. Some venues you might want to put more, more micros in, some venues you might not be, you know, might not want to put any micros in. But I'm going to put... I'm not going to put loads in because I'm going to use the ground bait today. With it being so cold, I'm going to put half a tub or half a pot of, of those two mil thin soap pellets in. So just wish them around, mix them around. But I'm also going to put just a small sprinkling of two mil pro expanders. I mean, we might have to put these on the hook. It might be a good hook bait, it might not. But put a few in is certainly going to give you an option of putting them on the hook. So I'm just going to mix them round. So that's me three balls. There's enough in here now for three balls on the main line and the one ball on my negative line. Now, I don't know what's going to happen today. Some venues you'll go to and the negative line can be fantastic. Other venues I go, it might fish really, really hard on the day. And your best line is your positive line. So if you do that, it gives you, it gives you a good option. So I'm just going to grab handful of ground bait like that i'm not going to squeeze it too hard just enough to so it clings together like that and that obviously will fit in the pot nicely so i'm going to make three of them well that's going to be for the positive line and then one for the negative line and i'll have a little bit left over i still got some more ground bait behind me in the bucket if i'm going to be topping up so that's it four balls like that three on the positive and one on the negative 
you know, and it's quite a bit of bait. When you think three balls of ground bait like that in conditions that we're fishing today, it's quite a lot of ground bait. So anyway, that's what I'm going to put in at the start. Let's now pot them in. Before I actually start, I'm just going to fly through the rigs that I've set up for today. Really, really simple. I've only set up two rigs. Both rigs have got five slip original elastic. You know, don't get better for skimmer fishing. Five or six. I'll fish for five because it is quite shallow and I think it's going to be really, really difficult with the conditions at the moment. 011 reflow power main line. I've got two rigs set up and they've got the same float. The first float I've set up is a 4B14 F1 fine. So I've got a simple little bulk on there. No problem at all, you know, bulk of number nines, and I've got two number nine droppers. So it's quite positive, you know, it's about four foot deep. I think that's gonna be absolutely perfect today. It is really, really calm, really still. So I think 4B14 will probably be the best rig. But I have set up a little, exactly the same float, the same elastic. I don't think I'll pick this up, it just depends on how difficult the fishing is. I've actually set up a 4B10 F1 fine. You know, if I go out there and it's so hard that I've got to get a bite, I have got a few maggots here. I'm hopefully it won't be like that, but I'm a bit concerned because it was half frozen this morning, this lake. So I've actually set up a little 4B10 F1 fine and I've just got the shot spread out in the first two foot. And both rigs are down to a up length of 010 Aki Power to a 18 SFL look. So it's absolutely perfect for silverfish fishing. Hopefully I won't have to pick this rig up, but that's how simple it can be. Two rigs, one nice and positive. Got the 4B10 there. Don't think it's gonna come into play, but it's the sort of thing I would do if I was in a match, you know, and it was really difficult. That little rig sometimes can play a massive part in your fishing. Well, I've been fishing for about an hour. It's taken probably, and to be honest, it was half frozen this morning. It was like minus four. You're gonna, you know, there's not many times you're gonna go out and catch immediately, but I've had a couple of real nice skimmers, quite a few sort of six ounce ones. But on that positive line, that's where I've caught all my big fish. Not so many little fish, which is weird. The actual negative line that I fished it or fed at the start, that's where I've gone out and caught these like five ounces. But I've just been in, caught that nice fish, then I caught a little one. I just feel like, even though it was the positive line where I put those three balls, I want to top it up. Because I went out there and I caught a couple of big ones, caught one little one, I had to wait a bit longer for a bite, and now I just feel like I want to top up. So I've got my original mix there. That's the actual mix that I put in at the start. 
I'm just going to make a little ball out of that, only crush it a little bit. So that's going to break down really, really quickly. But I'm not just going to sit there and sit there. I just feel like I want to top up, but not with too much. So what I'm going to do is top this 13 meter line up and then go to 14 and a half, just on that negative line. And that's what's nice about fishing, you know, feeding a negative line is if it's really tough, you know, especially if you go out in conditions like I have today, even though it's quite nice to sit in, it was really cold this morning, feeding that line off to a slight angle, a little bit further out, just like that one ball, that can get you bites before, hopefully, they come over that positive line. And that's probably the biggest tip I can give you, really, going into winter, sort of expander fishing. You know, some days you go out and where you put like three balls in, there won't be any fish, you know, it just won't happen. But you've got to do it, you know, because some days you'll go in there and it'd be amazing, it'd be the coldest day you've ever fished in and the positive line is so much better. And that's why we go fishing, that's what you learn over many years of fishing. So I'm just going to go back out to my 14 and a half metre line. I'm not going to give it long, but I just might nick a few small skimmers. Hopefully, you know, it might even, might even catch a, a bigger one over that negative line. But up to now, it's all been an odd roach and the smaller skimmers. So, you know, it's, it's just being nice and patient. It's not about, you know, we're not sacking up. It's just nice fishing and just trying to work out the best way, you know, what to top up with. There we go, look, there's a bite straight on that negative line. Might have been a roach bite, that was a proper fast bite. So I said, it's off to a slight angle. I can see me float, I got it in a nice shadow of the tree, because like, it's tricky like this time of year in the winter. And that's, there we go, little fish. A little tiny fish on that as well. It always amazes me on these sort of venues though, where you can go to some venues and the roach will eat expanders. There's some venues I go to, you can't get a roach on expanders, they just will not eat pellets. Every venue's different. And that's why you go, you know, that's what's so nice about going to different venues. There's venues that I go, they catch loads of carp on pellets and the skimmers don't really, don't really want pellets, it's ever so strange. But they certainly want pellets on this venue, that's for certain. So I'm just gonna drop that back in. If I catch another couple of little tiny fish on this line, especially if they're a little roach, I'm gonna to top that back up as well. But that positive line, that's taken quite a long time really to, to actually get a bite on it, which you know doesn't surprise me. Just lift and drop as well. It's really important that you lift and drop, only like a float length out. At the moment, it's not about dropping your rig in and getting a bite immediately. I mean, that might change as we go along. But at the moment, it's about being patient. There's an odd fish in your peg. It's certainly not the case of dropping it in. And it's just solid with little skimmers. It just feels like that one ball there. Yeah, I caught on it early, but it's probably all been so there's not a, not a lot left for them fish to come over now. So what I'm going to do, I've had that one little bite straight away when I dropped in, but I think that was a tiny little roach, to be perfectly honest. And I just feel like topping that up again with a similar size ball to what I put on that main line. Because that's the one thing with expanders, some, you know, normally if they're there, you get a bite pretty quick, especially for skimmers. And let me just have another quick go. Well, I'll just put that ball in. just to see. Just before I do top up that negative line. Because that that sort of give me some sort of the information that I'm looking for. You know, have they come to that topping up? If I get a bite on this now really quick, I mean I've only left that a few minutes that where that where I topped up with. I'll then top up that. There we go. Look at that. Oh that was a great big lift bite. Bump that. So what I'm going to do, so they definitely come to that topping up. 
So I'm just going to top up that line over to me left. Because that's the sort of information that I'm looking for when I'm fishing. Yes, they have come to that topping up. I might have left that a little bit too long, that negative line. But that's, you know, that's gambles that you take when you're fishing. But that's how I go fishing. That's how I go about fishing, especially this time of year. And we've had two mega, mega cold easterly days. The wind's been horrendous the last two days. This was our frozen. So a little ball in there. Take that 40 and a half metre piece off. That was a great big lift bite as well off that fish. And it felt like a good fish as well. So full milk expander. So just concentrate on that, this 13 meter line where I've put a lot more bait in. But there's no bubbles, there's nothing like that, there's nothing to sort of tell me there's fish in the peg. And that's, you know, would it be a mega, mega cold? Obviously when the water gets colder and colder, you do get a lot less activity with bubbles and things like that. And so the last, them big fish, them pound and a quarter fish, probably a pound and a half a couple of fish. I think if they come in your peg, you're not gonna get so many bites quick. It is gonna be about being a bit patient, sitting there. Like when I dropped that in there, and that was like, you know, literally sort of probably 10 seconds. Oh yeah. Well, I've just had another little bite there. I think it's another little skimmer. These are, these are your sort of bread and butter fish on some venues I go. And they might not look that heavy, but believe you me, they do half weigh. I've caught some real big weights of them, sort of 20, 30 pound on some venues. They're normally, when they come in your peg, you can catch them really, really quickly. So that's on me positive line, obviously, again. I'm just gonna stick with this positive line for a bit. And just think about how how I'm actually going to top it up and when I'm going to top it up. And I've just flicked my rig just a little bit past the main feed as well. That's worth trying sometimes if they're just hanging off. Some venues it works, some venues it doesn't. I'm going to put one of those two mil expanders on in the minute just to try it as well. well. I've not really had a bite where I've lifted and dropped yet either. It's been about sitting there. But you just know, every time I drop a, the rig in now, I get a little indication. It's just enough to think, there's definitely one there, there's definitely some fish in me peg now, where before on this line I was getting nothing. You literally just sit there, and I did actually catch a, tiny, a few tiny roach at the start. There's none of that happening now. Every time that float goes under now, it's a skimmer. There you go, little tiny lift bite. Crafty little fish though, them skimmers, honestly. You can't believe a little skimmer like that could be so crafty. I'm just gonna try a little two mil expander. Don't really, you know, trying to, I wanna catch the bigger ones, but I think when them bigger ones in your peg, they're gone. There's nothing like that in your peg anyway. So I'm just going to try one of those little two mil expanders. They probably puff up to like a three mil, three and a half mil. So I said, always worth carrying them with you. 
Even if you put two on the hook, sometimes you can just put two on the hook just to make the bait a little bit bigger and just see what happens. That's the sort of things, you know, that's the sort of things I try when I'm fishing. There's definitely some there now. There we go. <laughs> Put a two mil expander on and catch a bigger fish. Incredible. You know, because that's what you've got to think, you know, when you're when you're fishing with ground bait, especially with ground bait and two mil pellets, I mean that's what they're eating, that's what they're coming over. So having something like a two mil expander, you know, they're simple to do. There's no messing about on the bank. And that's what these sort of films are all about. Probably like 10, 12 ounces, that one. I was really expecting that to go under and catch one of those tiny little ones again. Look at him, probably 12, 12, 14 ounces on a two mil. Size of bait sometimes, it makes a huge difference. There's definitely a few fish there, and I've topped it up again. And all of a sudden, these fish can, you know, you can go from getting the odd bite this time of year to literally, you know, solid and really quick. I've had some fantastic days on expanders where you literally drop your rig in it settles and just goes straight under so quick. And then you get days like we're having at the moment where it's a bit tricky, you know, there's an odd fish coming in your peg. And these are the days when you probably actually learn more about topping up, you know, what bites you're sort of looking for. They're always the best days for learning these days when it's a bit tricky. There's a few fish around feeding. There we go. Well, there's another one now. And just a summary, really, of what's happened today is put them three balls in on the positive line at 13 metres. And I decided, because of the weather, because of the conditions, I thought I'll put a, a negative line in. And obviously, like, like I've spoke during the film, is that negative line has been really good because it's got me some bites early. This ain't one of the bigger stamp ones I've had. But this positive line, at the end, I've basically, I've sacked that negative line off because it's just been, as soon as they've come on where I've put the, the main amount of ground bait in, I've just concentrated on that. And that's a sort of smaller stamp of what we've actually caught. But it's been absolutely brilliant. It's been tough conditions to fish in. You know, really, really cold this morning. You know, sort of, it's had some cat ice on it. But the most important thing is even though I've caught where I've put most of my ground bait in, was actually topping up as well. And literally, I've, what I've done, I've sort of topped up after every fish with a little pot, but I've obviously experimented a little bit, trying to get two fish off of these little tiny nuggets. And I've just dampened my ground bait down a little bit where I can just give that a squeeze like two or three times and make a ball, like I said, about the size of a marble, and that just holds, and holds together enough to get it down to the bottom and try and fish right in it. That's been the most important thing today. The fish have been milling around off the bottom. You put that tiny little ball in, changing from four mil to two mil expanders. I've actually caught a few late on on four mils again, but I've caught also caught, when they've been in my peg and I've struggled to catch, on a two mil expander. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and have one more before we go. Just get that slime off and just run you through exactly again what I've been doing. I've got that little ball that I've just made up. Just put that in my little cab pot, fun that down a little bit so it just sort of clings into the pot, enough to ship it out to where you're fishing. And unfortunately, it's gonna to have to be the last fish of the day But it's been, it's been quite difficult today because like a lot of times during the winter, seeing your float is really difficult when the sun's out. So I'm just gonna tap that in. 
and then try and drop it, even though that water is so cold, they still want feeding like quite often. But the, the last thing I wanted to do was really make a cloud. If I couldn't have got any fish in me peg, then I probably would have put like loose ground bait in, potted that in to try and get the fish to come to me and then pin them down to the bottom. But after like a, probably getting on for two hours, they definitely come to this sort of positive line. And then it's been more about getting them on the hook. And they've been tricky to catch. I'm not, you know, they have been hard to catch. They've certainly not just give themselves up today. You get little tiny indications. Some of the bites are like tiny little bites and some of the bites you get are proper, you know, straight under like carp bites. And to be fair, them bites are normally the better sized fish. These little sort of five, six ounce skimmers, it's like they come up to the pellet and they have a little look at it. And if I get a little bit of that, that's when I put like a two mil on, one of the two mil expanders, and it did definitely catch me a few fish. But I've tried to stick with four mils if I can, just to try and catch the bigger stamp skimmers. Oh, there you go. Feels like a nice skimmer again. So just putting that little ball in, fishing right on top of it. It's just been one of them days, really. They've not wanted to settle. I think, like I said, they're swimming around off the bottom because it's really cold. They've been swimming around off the bottom. Unless you put a little ball in, it won't go down. But it's been a brilliant day. It's been, you know, it's been hard. I'm not, you know, it is one of them days. It's been freezing cold but really, really enjoyable. Frustrating at times, because you know you've got a few fish in your peg. They're probably, I think they're just swimming around off the bottom, and then all of a sudden they go down, and you get a nice little spell. Unfortunately, I've got to call this the last fish of the day, because it is absolutely, it's gone freezing cold this last hour. But what a great fish to finish the session off here at Burley Fields. Absolutely fantastic little fishery, full of skimmers. I hope you've enjoyed episode six of Ships Tips and thanks for watching and see you on the bank sometime. Well, what can I say? I've had a fantastic winter days fishing here at Burley Fields Fishery. I've caught, you know, these fish have been tricky to catch today, but rewarding. You know, they've been good sized skimmers when they've rocked up. I've caught some roach early, but as soon as the skimmers moved in on the ground bait, they sort of went, and that was the end of the roach fishing, to be honest. So I hope you picked up some nice tips on how to catch skimmers during the winter months on expanders and ground bait. If you hit the subscribe button below, you'll watch more great videos like this one.